This subject on Life Sunday, divine recognition. The name of one was Shifra, the other Pua, divine recognition. Bless us, Lord, as we preach the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. I can tell by your response or lack thereof when you don't quite understand my subject. I can tell when you would say, well, I thought maybe some of those other topics he threw out would have been the one, and they may come in, but I want you to pay attention to this and listen to me. On this Life Sunday, we call it Life Sunday because it is a time that we've set aside to celebrate those who fight the battle of life. That's cold in the pro-life movement for those who believe that the unborn should be allowed to be born. For those of us who believe that Roe v. Wade was bad law. For those of us who believe that and pray that every abortion clinic in the country is shut down. For those of us who believe that the shedding of innocent blood is wrong and who believe with all of our hearts that because life in the womb is no longer sacred. We believe that there's a connection between that and the destruction of innocent life at the mall, the destruction of innocent life at schools, the destruction of innocent lives at a country and western concert in Las Vegas or the lives that were lost in uh, El Paso or the lives that were lost in Ohio, Columbine, so forth and so on. Once you cheapen life for the most innocent, you cheapen life for everybody. Amen. Amen. When this country got to the point where we could sleep at night, with a million babies being exterminated from the womb per year, something in us died for the, the appreciation for life, the sacredness of life. People now will kill you for insulting them. That's a high price to pay, isn't it? You said something to them they don't like. You disrespected me. Bang! That's, that shows a lack of appreciation for human life. You, they robbed the, the convenience store and the store owner participated and gave them what they asked for. And they murdered him anyway. Oh my. Human life is no longer sacred. And so what our lawmakers who don't have a clue are trying to do they're trying to pass laws that deal with inanimate objects. Inanimate objects. Inanimate objects. The problem is guns. A gun is an inanimate object. A gun can do nothing. A gun, like uh, back in the day when they were trying to outlaw SUVs and somebody would have a wreck driving an SUV. An SUV killed 10 people the other day on the news. The SUV went across the street and hit five cars. Uh, you might want to mention that somebody was driving that SUV. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How about that? How about that? A gun in the hand of a wicked person is a wicked thing. And uh, the problem if you, because I know some of you just don't understand those who push back when they start talking about passing these stricter gun laws. Here's the problem in a nutshell. They can pass all the gun laws they want, even if they, they, even if they confiscated, let's say if they took up all of the guns. 
They'll only get guns from law-abiding people. Criminals, if you're a criminal by definition, criminals don't obey the law. So that's the problem. And listen, in the world of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. If a man walk in here with all of these people, if he's the only one with a gun, he's in charge. But if there are several guns, you may not even know he has one. Nothing happens because everybody wants to live. See, the problem is with these laws they passed, uh, uh, most of the people who break the law uh, are criminals. Praise God. So we believe in life. Back to this. We believe that the unborn should live. And I believe that once we value the womb again, we'll value the rest homes. We'll value our senior citizens. We'll value the pregnant woman. We'll value one brother, one black brother will look at another brother and will value his life. We will value people's lives who don't look like us. We will value human life. A human being has a certain amount of dignity. God, life comes from God. God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. Amen. So we're having life Sunday and I prayed at other churches. Pastors, when you see this, enact, have a life Sunday. Tell your congregation about the slaughter that is going on in America and around the world. Tell them, warn them of the dangers of letting some slick politician come in and stand up with putting lipstick on a pig, giving a, um, a benign, they found a benign way to sell you death in beautiful words that make you think that they're giving you something. Make you think, women, that you're being empowered. I believe in a woman's right to choose, they say. But they don't say to choose what? So you, it is implied that they're giving you something. When in, actual, in actuality, what they're doing is they're keeping the doors open for you to get rid of your own future, your own tomorrow. Oh, you don't hear me. So we have Life Sunday. On this Life Sunday, I want to preach about two women. Two women whose names respectfully means brightness, Shifra, and splendid, Pura. Two women who lived up to their names. Um, when you read in the Bible and you learn the name of a person, don't assume that that name tells you about that character. The only person whose name we know matched up with his character was Jesus Christ. Amen. And the rest of them had to come up if they came up at all. And so these two women, they, they lived up to their names. They displayed unusual courage and wit by finding a way to be loyal to God, to the God of the Bible, to their own people, and to an oppressive and murderous government who sought to exterminate them from the face of the earth. What a situation. What a predicament that these two women found themselves in. Two women who, by profession, were nurses or midwives. But they were two women, I submit, happy warriors, Sister Leslie, Sister Dooley, who had an understanding of the times in which they lived and they valued 
human life. Two business women who understood the value of the male. Why the male? Why the male? Why wasn't Pharaoh concerned about little girls being born? Why the male? Since, since it takes a male and a female by birth to make a baby. Praise the Lord. Naturally. You know, more and more on television now they're showing two men with a little child or two women. I tell you what, they didn't get that child naturally. Babies don't come from there. That didn't happen. Say amen. amen. Why the male? Simple answer. And most races understand this. Blacks used to. The male carries the seed. The male is the future. To change a race, you don't have to Get rid of the female. All you got to do, you can keep them and just let members, the male of the dominant race, mate enough times with the female. And you see what happens. They either get lighter and lighter and lighter until everybody looks just like that male if he's light. Or they get darker and darker and darker till everybody has the complexion, complexion of that male if he's dark. You change or alter a race of people by the ones who carry the seed. Plus the seed carriers grow up to be men who protect or supposed to protect Protect the race. The Bible is patrician in its nature. The Bible was written to the patriarchs. Oh, I know this makes certain feminists gag. We're living, a, we're living in a messed up day. A messed up day. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, um, uh, NBC News has a story out. Uh, where a woman wrote a story, and she says that, uh, and she's crazy. She's she's as bizarre as they come. Uh, I don't know why NBC would even post the thing. And under normal times, you would have to find this story somewhere. Uh, this lady uh, asserts the bizarre opinion that heterosexuality is not working, that it is the bedrock of global oppression. Heterosexuality, women being with men and men with women. Men need heterosexuality to maintain their social dominance over women. Her name is Marcy uh, Bianco. I don't know her. I guess some guy must have quit her. <laughs> Maybe the guy cheated on her or something. I mean, something bad happened. So, oh, something bad happened, boy. Because uh, uh, Maybe she's mad with us. Uh, she says, uh, the, she said, women, on the other hand, are increasingly realizing that not only, uh, look at this, women, on the other hand, are increasingly realizing not only that they don't need heterosexuality, but that it is also often the bedrock of their, of women's, uh, of, of men's global oppression. Miss Bianca lumps together a series of recent stories in the news from uh, Jeffrey Epstein to Dalton to El Paso to the shooters to Miley Cyrus's separation. And, uh, and you know, Sister, uh, the lady Huff, Julian, is that her name? Huff. 
You know, she announced the other day that uh, I guess she told her husband that she says she declared that she's not straight. If my wife declared that, I would declare I want a divorce. That's the end of that. There ain't no let's go to the altar. None of that. No, let's seek the Lord. Let, what after all these years? You what? <laughs> no, this thing is over. <laughs> I'm just believing God to deliver him. No, you believe. Because I'm gone. Amen. And she would be the other way around. After all these years, baby, I got something to tell you. I, I, I chose to be with you, but the truth is I'm homosexual. Oh, see, let me tell you, that's sweet, kind, dainty sister who walks up in here. Huh. Now, you talking about a sister who can, can get a man straight? Bishop and all, I mean, just tell me off, praise God. I mean, off, and I would be told off and deservedly so. And anybody who tried to meet with her, nah, 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 Sister Wooden, nah, nah, don't be too hasty because you know God can deliver. You got to hang on in there. Leave. Don't you, don't you stay in that. Don't you stay. Now, there are some problems we can navigate. That ain't one of them. person got to be delivered now you got to know who you are sexually you, you got to you got to have that settled you got to have that settled they can't be married to no man he don't he don't know whether he want men or women you come home he's standing there with your slip on <laughs> then tore up your shoe with big feet trying to fit in your shoes you come home early and catch him like that. That's how a man gets killed. She come back, she, re, she lose her memory for six years. I, I don't know what happened. When I saw him, I just drew a blank. I don't know what happened. And just, by the way, where is it? The detective tell her, oh, he's been dead for six years. As the status quo, heterosexuality, according to this lady, is just not working. She concludes before explaining just how evil men are and how women are learning to live without them. <sighs> Thank God for Shifra and Pua. Pura. Poor, who understood, who understood that men are necessary. Now, I like these women. Did y'all hear that? Out there streaming, that was, un I, I didn't ask for those applause. This is a good church. This is a Bible church. You those were women cheering the men on. That's right. That's right. Amen. And brothers, remember how they cheered us on now. And uh, but when it's time, we're going to cheer them on. Praise the Lord. That's, uh, amen. Well, ain't, no, ain't no battle here. I heard someone say one time, the Bible is gender neutral. The Bible is not gender specific. I thought about Titus. Titus said, tell the old man, tell the young man, tell the older women, tell the younger women. I thought about, I thought about all the writings of Paul and all the, 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 the scriptures that deal with the differences in the gender. Matter of fact, the Bible teaches that even in appearance, the genders, their appearance Style of dress, hairstyles, everything ought to be different. You ought to be at a glance to be able to tell that's a woman. At a glance, that's a man.
All this blending is not of God. Let me preach. I'm, I've been up. Let me, let me get back on track. So, so the, these two women knew that they could not side with anyone. Not even the highest ranking government official in Egypt. The king himself. Notice, he didn't send anyone to talk to them. He spoke to them. That's quite intimidating. The king himself talked directly to them. And he gave them a wicked command. Two women. Brethren, say two women who were given one of the highest honors and recognitions that has ever been given throughout the annals of human history. Oh, yeah. What was their honor? Greater than a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Greater than... Induction into the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, or Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Greater than being mentioned in any book of honors. They received one of the highest honors that's given a human being. And that is that they had their names mentioned in the Bible for the right reasons. Shifra and Pua. Pua. Their names are mentioned in Scripture. Are you praying for me? The Jewish rabbis call the book of Exodus, they literally call this book the book of names. The book of names, although the word Exodus is an angelized virgin, version of the Greek word which means departure. However, the title in Hebrew literally means, and these are the names of. So the Exodus is the book of names. This book describes the deliverance of the children of Israel, of the Israelites from Egypt, and their journey to Mount Sinai and the events that occurred during their sojourn there. The Exodus, the book of names, or these are the names because it opens with a list of names. It opens with the list of names of the sons of Jacob. I read them to you. Praise the Lord. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asa. And it tells us in verse 5 that Joseph was there down there already. These names. Are you praying for me? Praise the Lord. Uh, these names that had escaped the land, the famine in Canaan, and had gone down in Egypt, and the book opens up with these names. And in this book, we see the first instance in Scripture of what we call today civil disobedience. This act got their names written in Scripture. God honors those who honor him. God honors those who honor him. Have you noticed that not even the king has his name mentioned? We can debate as to who he was, but we don't know his name. But I know Shifra and Pua. When it referenced the king, it said the king came, the king of Egypt. But we know the names 
of these women. Now, let me back up and say God himself has instituted civil government. And I'm not against government. Amen. And we're called of God to be good citizens. Romans chapter 13 in verse 1 says, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. And the powers, speaking of civil government, that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. So if you decide to be a career lawbreaker, you're going against God. Amen. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, you know, we live in a day now where the lawbreaker can break the law and then the law enforcement officer gets blamed. Well, what happened to him? Was that bad enough for him to get killed? I don't know, but I know this. That's why you don't do what they did. Some of the names that we hear in the news, I hated the, what happened to, and the man got fired for it, what happened to the guy who got choked out. But you know what people don't say? The guy in New York. Was it New York? You know, you know what that doesn't, get, doesn't get told in the story? The businesses that called the police that said, the man's out here again selling cigarettes one at a time in front of our store, selling them looses. The, the police didn't know the business people called and told them. And uh, he had did that many, many times. I've already said I hate that he lost his life. But the point is, that episode more than likely probably would have never taken place had the law been obeyed in the first place. Hands up, don't shoot, never happened. According to the Obama Justice Department, according to the then Gen Attorney General uh, uh, Holder, when he investigated, they found out that it was made up. Now, all this marching, hands up, don't shoot, hands up, don't, never happened. The man who said that he heard uh, uh, Brown uh, say that took it back. It never ha happened. All that mayhem, all of that, and what it boiled down to is none of it would have happened had a decision to rob somebody's store and walk down the middle of the road with the goods in your hands had he just not decided to do that. The young man would be alive today. What is my point? Consequences. This is what we need to be told. You, you won't hear this anywhere else. Praise the Lord. All, all, all you hear is it's just racism, 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 racism. Everybody, everything now is racism. Everything is racism. Praise the Lord. We're doing better than we've ever done, and everything now is about race. And uh, they, the, the person who, who they point to, who they say is the one causing all the race, Racism, uh, the racism is the, the media pitting one group against another. And they know how to push your buttons. Matter of fact, racism has been expanded. Stuff that we would have never thought was racism. Praise the Lord. Became racism. Became racist because the media said it was racist. I had a brother to tell me. He said, when I hear somebody say, make America great again, what I hear is make America white again. I said to him, I've never equated whiteness with greatness. I know some great white people. I know some white folk who are not so great. I know some great black people. And I know some black people who are not so great. So great doesn't have a color to me. So I'm not going to let some talking head somewhere to redefine for me what racism is or isn't. Four elected Congress ladies 
that it doesn't matter who disagrees with them. It's because they're of color. That's got to be thrown in there. That's race baiting. If you are an elected official and you take a position, somebody can disagree with you. And it doesn't mean that because they're disagreeing with you, they're disagreeing with you because of your complexion. People can have honest differences of opinion. Oh, you all don't know how to say amen to that. But you have to admit, what I'm saying makes sense. Oh, let me, let me get back on uh, this. Uh, praise the Lord. Let me get back to this text. But we're called to obey the law. The Bible says if we resist the ordinances, they that resist, verse, uh, Romans 13, verse 2, the B clause says, they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? It says, do that which is good. Obey the law, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he, the peace officer, is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bear not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now that's the Bible. Well, what about those uh, rogue police officers? Oh, any rogue officer is not right. And there are bad apples. Praise the Lord. And when bad apples are dealt with, uh, like uh, we saw what happened on videotape in South Carolina, when the brother was stopped with a, a, a light out, and, and, uh, and, and when he ran, the police officer shot him multiple times in the back. What a wicked, godless, uh, 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 wicked thing to do, and an and, and abuse of power, and he's locked up for it. Praise the Lord. He's locked up. He's wrong. There's no right way. You don't treat a human being like that. That was wickedness to the core. It's an abuse of power. It's an embarrassment to the uniform. But you can't get rid of all peace officers because of what that man did. Because if we did, you can't have a society. Because you know who are, who's rooting for us to get rid of all of the law enforcement officers, the criminals. And one thing about criminals, they're not racist. The black criminal don't care at all that you're black. Don't make any difference. All in your house. All in your car. Give me that purse. Say, well, I'm black. Give me that purse, ninja. They don't care about that kind of stuff. So we need, you don't hear me today. So uh, God wants us to obey the law. Ecclesiastes 8 and 2 says, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment in regard to an oath to God. God wants us to be good citizens. 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14 says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Obey the law, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers for the praise and for the praise of them that do well. That's first Peter chapter two, verse 13 through 14. However, government does not have the right to compel men to do things which are contrary to God's law. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image which thou hast.
has set up. Even though you're the king, you don't have power to get us to disobey God. Acts chapter 4, verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than to hearken unto God, judge ye. Glory to God. And finally, Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. When man disagrees with God, we obey God. When the law is godless, we do not adhere to a godless law. Although we are today, we are to obey, excuse me, the law of the land. Our duty is to follow the higher command given by God, which is the greatest good. Abortion may be the law of the land. But our duty is to remember that the God of the Bible is against the shedding of innocent blood. I know what they did. You know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is sick now. She's fighting pancreatic cancer. But, but uh, I don't know how long she has to live, and I wish her well. And, and certainly would rejoice in her healing. But I'm glad that she told the truth. She said, with Roe, we went too far. Said, we thought that when we passed Roe, Roe v. Wade, that we were going to get rid of the people that we didn't want too many of. Well, in 73, when they passed Roe, the main, part, the main people in America was white people and black people. Well, who do you think the people were that they didn't want to have too many of. Roe v. Wade was passed to get rid of black folk. Praise the Lord. The eugenicist movement was put in place. That would have never been a eugenicist movement had the slaves not been freed. For as long as uh, slavery was the law, they couldn't have enough slaves. Couldn't give birth to another. Matter of fact, praise the Lord, to keep it going, they put a son in there with his mother. Hence the etymology of the term mother. But as soon as we got free, all of a sudden, there's a population problem. And you know, I don't have time to, oh, maybe I'll take my, I, I tend to take my preaching, I think I take it too seriously. But I ain't going to change. Amen. They asked the question, and you should read his speech. Those who wanted to keep slavery, one that they argued like they were concerned for the slave. Oh, we think we should keep slavery because if the slaves are emancipated. If we free them, the pro-slavery crowd said, how will they live? If we set them free, uh, they won't work. That was the pro-slavery crowd. Now, what do you mean they won't work? Slaves doing all the work. What do you mean won't work? We're doing all the work. They're doing all the work free. Praise the Lord. It says, if we free them, they will become a ward of the state. If we free them, they might kill their slave masters. They went all the way, way wrong <laughs> with that one. But what are we going to do? And I love the answer that the great Frederick Douglass gave when, when asked, what do you do with the slaves? What shall be done with them? But Douglass said, let them alone. He says, our answer is, do nothing with them. Mind your own business and let them mind theirs. Your doing with them is their greatest misfortune. They have been undone by your doings. And all they now ask and uh, really need at your hand 
is just to let them alone. They suffer by every interference and succeed best by being let alone. The Negro should have been let alone in Africa. This is Douglas's argument. Let alone when the pirates and the robbers offered him for sale in our Christian markets. Let alone by your courts, judges, politicians, legislators, and slave drivers. Let alone altogether and assured that they are thus to be let alone forever. You should have left them alone and don't bother them no more. And that they must now, praise the Lord, make their own way in the world. Just the same as any and every other variety of human family. As colored men, we only ask to be allowed to do with ourselves and subject only to the same great laws for the welfare of human society which applies to uh, uh, which applies to other men Jews Gentiles barbarians Scythians that is the same welfare or help that you give to everybody else just give us that but we don't need anything special leave us alone oh my oh I'm going to show you in just a minute where well, we were better off had they left us alone Black family, a, a black child were more likely to be raised by a mom and a dad doing slavery than they are today. We had more two-parent families in the black community before we got all of that help during the 60s. The worst thing that could have ever happened. The statistics shows it because it destroyed the black family. Government helping us. Lord have mercy. Oh, it messed us up. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me just say this just a little bit more. Uh, he says about the Negro, says, In like manner, we answer those who are perpetually puzzling their brains with the question as to what shall be done with the Negro. Let him alone and mind your own business. If you see him plowing, in an open field, leaving the forest, at work with a spade, a rake, a hoe, a pickaxe, or a bill, let him alone. He has the right to work. If you see him on his way to school with spelling books and geography and arithmetic in his hands, let him alone. Don't shut the door in his face nor bolt your gates against him. He has the right to learn. Let him alone. Don't pass laws to degrade him. If he has a ballot in his hand and is on his way to the ballot box, praise the Lord to deposit his vote for the man whom he thinks will mostly justify and wisely administer the government uh, which has power, the power of life and death. Something's going on in here. Let him alone. See, the devil don't want me to preach this one. Amen. See, I, I, hey, can they hear me streaming too? Amen. Y'all keep, keep me right, huh? What happened? A glitch? Yeah, see, hard preaching will make a glitch. Just let him alone we would have been better off left alone in 1950 oh my black americans this is a profile the bureau of statistics i didn't make this up in 1950 married couples in the black family 78 percent married couples over households 18 percent single mothers or with no husband present in 1960 74 percent Two-parent families and 22%, uh, uh-oh, no husband, female householder. Now, 
by 1970, 68%. Two-parent families, 28%. No husband. By 1980, 56%. With a mom and dad, 40%. Female head of household. No husband. By 1990, 50%. Two-parent family, 44% female head of household, no husband. By 1991, 48%. Two-parent family, 46% female head of household. Today, 78, 73% of our children are born in families where there's no daddy. With all of this help. All of this money, all of this government interference. See, Johnson hired workers and sent them to the black family and told the black uh, mother, we'll give you government cheese, we'll give you milk, we'll give you help, but dad's got to go. And they put the black man out of his house. And made the black woman's husband uh, her companion. Instead of him being uh, a man, he became government. And look at us today. Look at us today. I can't get any help in here. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, if we would have been better off left alone. Praise the Lord. Even I'm not advocating Jim Crow. I'm not advocating separatism. But I, I am saying we did better. Now, if you're going to help us, don't help us at the expense of our men. And that's what they did. And we're trying, and we're, and we're, we're not trying. I want to say we're trying to play catch up, but we're not even trying to do that. We're just giving in to the status quo. We're just sinking down. And every now and again, you'll find a preacher who will tell the truth like I'm telling you today. Yes, sir. They, they, the government, uh, I like what Reagan said about government. He says, uh, the larger government is not the answer. He said, government is the problem. When they come in, they mess things up. They mess things up. And I don't understand these people who are pro, these people who are against Choice, I'm getting off a little bit, but I got to throw it in here. Choice in education. It's funny, all of the people who black folk vote for are the main ones against choice in education. They want to keep black kids in poor performing schools. They don't want to give them an opportunity to go to a better school. They fight Christian education. They fight choice in education. The devil is a liar. I think our children, not only do they have the right to be born, but they ought to have, since their parents pay tax also, they ought to have a choice. I feel my help coming. Oh, let me get back to this, but you know I'm telling you the truth. So, yeah, they, the Hexos decided, y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Uh-huh. He said, preacher, that's not what I come to church for. You ought to. That's what you ought to come for. You ought to come to hear the truth. You ought to come because, let me tell you, our plight is not a good one. Because we put our trust in the wrong people. We trust in people. The reason they do us like they do us is because they know that once we get someone elected, there's no accountability. We don't go to the city hall meeting. We don't know what's going on. We just feel that once they're elected, we've, our job is done. Then you got one party who know we're going to vote for them no matter what, and another party who know we won't vote for them no matter what. So neither party has any interest in doing anything for us. So they're going after the Hispanics, and they're leaving us out. Praise the Lord. And it's time to sound the alarm. And say, we're not going to let you destroy our seed. I need a few more shifras and need a few more puas. Whether they're male or female, we need some folk who will defy the law when the law is unjust. 
what is not in the interest, the best interest of our nation, and it's certainly not in the best interest of the black community for men to marry men. It's not in our best interest to exterminate our children. It's not in our best interest, praise the Lord, to go along to get along. It's time now for us to stand and fight, but fight for our best interest. Not fighting like the Black Lives Matter crowd fight. How are you going to be a group that says Black Lives Matter, but you team up with Planned Parenthood, the biggest killer of black lives? There's something wrong with you. you, you, you you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Because you're like the CEO of Toys R Us. Toys R Us supported Planned Parenthood, and they put themselves out of business. I wish I could have talked to the CEO. I would have said, hey, man, don't you need babies. Grown folk, most grown folk don't buy toys for themselves. I said most. We got a few of them in here love toys. But most grown folk don't play with toys. Amen. You need babies, toys are us. You need babies. But babies are being cut out. Praise the Lord. Babies are being cut down. And uh, a, a wicked group of people. Let's go home, Rocky. Uh, took over. Yes, sir. They took over uh, Egypt. Yes, they did. And... They, 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 they saw, praise the Lord, God's people. And let's be honest, Dr. Foster, you a theologian. Israel had gotten too comfortable in Egypt. You know, God knows how to stir you. Mm -hmm. Comfortable in your sin, comfortable in your complacency, comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. He knows how to send the Hyksos who will interfere with your comfort. And there they were doing good. Had become an economic powerhouse. They were doing good in Egypt, but Egypt was not their promised land. God said, I didn't give you Egypt. I gave you Canaan. Oh Lord, don't you settle with less than what God said. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good it may seem to be. If it's not what God said, it's going to go south after a while. Leave that woman's husband alone because that ain't what God said. I can't get any help in here. Leave that man's wife alone because she ain't what God said. Can I get a witness? Oh, Lord. This, this thing that's going on, these new lifestyles, transgenderisms, and all of these other isms and schisms, they're not going to work because they're not what God said. I'm here to say that it's going to be like he said. Hallelujah, just like he said. That's what's going to be. It's going to be like he said. And uh, they had become an economic powerhouse. But God said, I promised your land. I promise you the land of Canaan. And uh, when the Hyksos took over, they made it hard on the children of Israel. Good God Almighty, they changed their status and they put them to work. Yes, they did. They began to tax them. They said, come, let us deal wisely with them. Verse 11 said, therefore, they set over them taskmasters. Can you imagine how bad it became in those wealthy, healthy Hebrew neighborhoods with their manicured lawns, with their greeneries? Good God Almighty, with all the respect that they were accustomed to getting, all of a sudden they become outcasts. The law broke in and began to take them, take the things that they own, took their money, afflicted them, put burdens on them. Yes, they, they, they did. But look at God. Verse 12 says, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, and the more they grew. And, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. 
and the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with, with rigor. They made their lives hard. And they, look at this, and they made their lives bitter in hard bondage. They went from having a good life, being the descendants of Joseph, to being people now who have a hard life. They lost their property. They lost their money. They lost their status. They lost their class. They went from being high class to working for little or nothing, to making bricks, to working in the field. They went from being somebody to being servants. Oh, Lord. And the Bible says again, it says two times, and it says in verse 13 and in verse 14 that they made them serve with rigor. That means their life got hard. The devil is wicked. But I want you to know that Satan is not satisfied making you serve with rigor. Satan wants to kill you as if that wasn't bad enough. Now you've taken their status, you've taken their money, you're making them serve with rigor, you brought them down, you've humiliated them, but that ain't enough. The king himself, now he goes down to Shifra's house and poor and said from now on, when a man child is born of the Hebrew women, if it's a boy, if it's a boy, kill the boy. It used to be good news to say it's a boy, but if they have the boy, kill the boy. But I thank God for two women who had the courage of their conviction. I thank God for two women who were willing to put their lives on the line. Some of us are sunshiny day Christians. You're a good Christian as long as things are going well, but you're not gonna inconvenience yourself to serve God or no one else. And then there are others who will be out there in the storm and the rain, who will be at the clinic, who will give out food, who will visit the rest homes, who will help the fatherless, who will help the widows, even though sometimes you know you need to be home cleaning up on Saturday. Sometimes you know you need to be home cutting your own grass. Sometimes the body's just tired. You're all poured out. You're tired yourself, but you understand that this is a high calling, that we are soldiers in the army of the Lord, and that no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have called him to be a soldier. Do I have any soldiers in here today who can wave their hands and say, I am a soldier in the army of the Lord? Yeah! Yes, Lord! a little heavy sometimes as soldiers were misunderstood sister Dooley met with me the other day bring me up brother Rick she said preacher we got to meet with brother Steve and go on the radio and tell our story because there are folk who are trying to make us look bad we're misrepresented we'll call mean things we're called crazy people. Hallelujah. We're not mean. We're just trying to save babies. We're just trying to be a voice for the voiceless. We're telling that frightened mother that there is another option. We're telling that frightened young man there is another option. We're out there to tell him that the law will make a way somehow. Can I get a witness 
Do I have anybody here who can say, I know that he'll make a way because he made a way. He made a way. He made a way for me. He made a way for you. Do I have anybody in here who the Lord made a way for? If you know that he's a way maker, let me hear you. Give God praise. Let me hear you. do something I want to do something I want to do something I want to take a chance here and I'm taking a chance and streaming live we can edit it if I fall flat we can edit it but I can't edit the live stream and so uh, common sense says y'all not do it but I there are folk who say that I don't have any common sense, and they might be right, but I want to hear, oh Lord, from those who are gathered here today, you wasn't born in an ideal situation. Good God Almighty, you wasn't born in wedlock. Maybe you never knew your daddy. Maybe mama and daddy wasn't married, but she gave birth to you. Anyhow, oh Lord, and the Lord made a way for you, and the Lord raised you up, and the Lord dusted you off, and Jesus made you somebody. If I'm talking to you, let me see you wave your hands. Hallelujah. Let me hear, let him hear you out there. Let him hear you. Give God praise. Give him praise. Tell the world. The Lord, he made a way. The Lord, he made a way. He made a way for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, he did. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. And so these women, they withstood Pharaoh. They told their midwives. Here's what they really told them. They said, when you hear that a Hebrew woman is about to give birth, make sure you don't show up till the child is born. Be late. Let the child be born. Let the pater- let the, the sex be determined. You know, back in the Bible days, they were able to tell the, uh, just by looking at a child whether it was a male or a female. And until the other day, the rest of us could. But the new thinking is that when a child is born, we gonna wait till the child become a teenager <laughs> to determine what it is. What kind of parent is that? You got to be a fool. A fool from the pit of hell. You got the devil in you. And so, they said, let the, let the boys, when the boy's born, save that child. And God honored them. God honored those women by putting their names in the Bible. We know them. We know them. Well, I, my name, Happy Warriors, our names will never be in the Bible. Happy Warriors, we didn't, we didn't make the scripture. God Almighty, can I get a witness? Happy Warriors, come down to the front. Your name will never be in the Bible. Oh, God. Mm, but I'm 
I'm glad that the Bible is not the only book that God has. Now let me fix that. It's the only book that'll get us to heaven. It's the only love letter from God on this side. But the Bible tells us of another book. Philippians 4 and 3 says, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel and with Clement also and with other of my fellow laborers whose names are written in the book of life. Good God Almighty, you won't find my name written in the Bible, but there's another book where they put my name at. My name is written in the book of life. How many are glad today that you have your name written in the book of life? Yeah! Ah, that's a book! Ah, that's a book that I had my name in when I got saved. Jesus wrote my name and he put it in the book of life. And Revelation 3 and 5 speaks of those who will have their names blotted out of the book of life. I'm not going to have my name blotted out of the book, but I want my name to stay in the book because if I can just keep my name, if he would just keep my name in the book of life, it's going to be worth it all. And in my clothes, warriors, let me hear you say yes, happy warriors. I heard in my clothes and I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was no more and there was found no more place for them. This current world will be gone forever. God's got a new earth and a new heaven and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book can I get a witness was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of the things which are written in the books according to their works and I saw the sea give up the dead which was in it and death and hell and look at this delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged good God almighty every man according to his works and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire and this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire I'm glad that I'm not going to the lake of fire for even though you can't find our names written in this book there is a book where our name is already written there is a book oh there is a book I'm gonna live holy I'm gonna serve the Lord I'm gonna keep on protesting keep on fighting for the unborn keep on living holy because one of these all days the Lord is going to call our names the Lord ah, the Lord somebody help me praise him Woo! yeah yeah grab somebody by the hand and tell them neighbor if you don't see me walking down here I'll be somewhere somewhere listening 
for my name somewhere oh, waiting for the roll to be called Sunday, all workers. Elder Amanchuku prayed a surplus plan, prayer that was powerful. Look at how God speaks. Now I want the workers, got the happy warriors, those who serve in the kitchen, those who drive the vans, those who feed, those who go to the shelters. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. God's going to bless you. We're servants. Servants. We serve. And then you know us, i tell you something else, you know us too. A lot of servants who are double duties because they're working a whole lot of different avenues, prison ministries. 
Come on down, youth department. I mean, workers, come on down. Workers, workers, those who, those who labor. Because I know sometimes the labor gets heavy, but you got to always keep your spirit right. Keep your mind right. Because it's a privilege to labor. Our names are written in the book of life. And you know what? There is a favor that God gives while we're here. While we're here. Hallelujah. While we're here. Oh, we're going to get it up there. But while we're here. While we're here. While we're here. We're getting ready to pray. Those who are watching, you serve in your church. You serve in the kingdom. Maybe you maybe your servitude is that you pray for us. Those who are standing around who are not on the altar, you, you're prayer warriors. You, you, amen. Some of you, the way you serve is you undergird servants. Amen. Amen. Department workers, come on down. Glory to God. Mm. So all of this lends itself to life. Well, this is a life church. Woo! Everything that we do make everything else go. <laughs> Are you ready? We're getting ready to pray. Pray that God will pour out his favor. That the Lord will honor you. See, those women got honored on this side, the text says, the Lord bless them with families of their own. Bless them with houses. In Egypt, God blessed them. Well, you know what? God's going to bless us. Because we serve. He blessed them. And they got blessed three times. They got the name in Exodus. They got blessed for their work. And their names are written in the book of life. Woo! So now, we ain't we gonna get three because it's too late for us to make the Bible. We can't make the Bible, Wanda, but you know what? We can get blessed here. And we got our names written in the book up there. See, Coach, we still, we're still blessed. Barrios, we're still blessed. Uh, he, he blessed me two times. And see, those two blessings cover everything. Everything. Those two blessings will heal your body. They'll fix your family. They'll give you a job if you're unemployed. They'll, they'll, heal. they'll make a way out of no way. It's why you still hear those blessings. Those blessings. Father, we come before you right now, Lord. We come before you right now, Lord. Overflow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Favor. Yeah. Glory. Glory. For every believer yes, who will be a shifra, poor, oh God, those of us who have decided that the law of God reigns supreme, that we'll go along with the president if the president goes along with God. But we can't go with him if he don't go with God. If he don't go with God. That we'll go along with the senator if the senator goes with God. We'll go along with the congressman, the, the governor, the elected officials. We'll, we'll go along even with Hollywood if they go with you. But if they don't, we can't go with them. We can't. We'll go along with the preacher if the preacher goes with God. But if the preacher departs from God, then we can't follow the preacher. We can't follow the bishop. We can't follow anybody who departs from the Lord. Jesus, we stand before you on this life Sunday asking you, God, to endow us with your favor in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands up and receive from him.
take it with your hands almost cuffed like you're receiving see in this manner we're we're surrendering oh let's let's uh, let's go on and surrender 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 lord we surrender to you oh god glory to god we give up we surrender our will we surrender our lives we surrender our ambition we surrender ourselves to you in the name of jesus and lord after surrendering now saints we do we receive now we receive from you lord glory your your favor your supernatural supply your blessings and abundance power and influence we receive it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, make us, make us sheep for us and pull us. In the name of Jesus, we receive, we receive, we receive, oh, God, we receive. We receive our bodies healed. We receive our children saved. We receive our minds being made strong. We receive the glory of God. We receive, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We stand on your word. We stand on your truth. We stand on your word. We just stand on divine truth. Oh God, hallelujah. And we don't serve for recognition, but God, we want to be recognized. We want our names. We thank you for writing our names. And we identify with you. And Lord, if there's anything that we're doing that will keep you from identifying with us, Lord, take it away. In the name of Jesus. For we identify with you on this Life Sunday. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Would you give him praises? Would you give him praises? Father, energize right now. Energize. Lord, some, some of the warriors, I want to say this to you. It is natural. Now listen to me. And I exclude no one. It is natural when working and serving in the church to at times get tired. It is demonic to get bitter. Now if you're tired and you need a break, go take one. But don't when you're tired, let your attitude get off. Your spirit is off. See, that's not God. See, human beings get tired. When I, when I was playing football, because I wasn't one of them that would hardly do it, but if the coach, I never asked to be taken off the field, but when he saw that I couldn't, that I needed a breather, they pull you out. What, what is coach, what are you doing? Drink this, give you some Gatorade. Refresh yourself, then send you back out there. Sometimes you may have to step back for a minute. I'd rather for you to step back if you need a minute to step back, and then you step up joyful, then the sense when I'm standing there, or when we're traveling, or, when, or whatever we're doing, the sense resentment from you. So that's a spirit. That's a spirit. And you got to know how to keep yourselves encouraged and inspired and how to talk the right kind of language. When one gets sleepy, most, most people when they get sleepy, they don't fight, they just go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. And then you come back refreshed because our opponents don't get tired. I wanna thank God for Sister Leslie Yesterday, we talked uh, Friday night. 
And uh, uh, she said, Bishop, I, I'll be in uh, Asheville Saturday. I won't be able to be with you there. And I told her, you know, I feel with her going to Asheville to carry that assignment, to bring the word of this gospel up there. I said, I feel like I'm in two places at one time. Because if she's in Asheville, I'm in Asheville. And I told her, she's in two places at one time. Because if I'm at that church doing the teaching, she's there. Because we agree. So God divided it up. Because I already know what they're going to hear when they hear the word of the Lord. So we serve. We serve. Which workers are the most important? All of them. Some get more attention than others because of the nature of what we do. Most people uh, are more impressed uh, with a large bicep muscle on the male physique. They see that large bicep and they say, man, that guy's strong. But most people who know the anatomy know that you don't get the, you don't garner the majority of your strength from your bicep. The, you, most of your lifting power in terms of your arms come from your triceps and your shoulders. And then your strongest muscles are in your legs. You follow me? But there are some pieces. Uh, the bicep basically, that's, just, that's it. That's all it does. It lifts the forearm. You pull it, it can't. Your arm dangles, can't. See, and uh, but most people when they lift, they don't. Most people don't lift this way. They lift that way. They lift this way. You follow me? So sometimes just because we might talk more about one group, I don't want that van driver to say, "Well, I think they've forgotten about me," because if you don't go, there are many who won't make it to church. I, I don't want that because sometimes I may get a, a, a more immediate report from the happy warriors that the prison workers think that we don't care about the prison work because we do. My God, today, everybody's important. We need every worker, every worker. The, the world is mounting up. They're getting their troops together. Amen. And uh, we've got, we have such a powerful thing. And when you get rest, you don't want to rest too long. People who work out know, you, you, nobody makes every workout. But you, you, you know, if you miss too many, it becomes easy to miss. Next thing you know, you done picked up 15, 20 pounds and uh, say, I got to get back in the gym. You sure do. But then when you get back, it takes a while for it to get back in you because you stayed away too long. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pattern person. You mess me up when, I, when you break my rhythm. I, I'm rhythmatic. If I can keep my rhythm going, I'm good because I, I, I know what I'm going to be doing. I get thrown off when my rhythm is broken. Praise the Lord. So let us serve. Those who are streaming today, serve the Lord. Don't. If you get tired, ask God to revive you. Amen. Jesus even told his disciples there have been much going and comings. Take your leisure, then come on back. A leisure is not, I don't know about, I, I, there are pastors who take 30 days off, two months off. I don't, I don't, even, I don't know how you could be called to preach and take 30 days off. I don't know of any, any profession where somebody take 30 days off, unless you're a football player and the season's over, and they work out. They got to stay in shape. Basketball players don't never stop shooting. Am I right, coach? Because you can't afford to lose that touch. Because if you lose that touch, the, your eye, goal, hand coordination, you can't judge the distance. And you can't judge how much touch you need to put on the ball. So you have to keep it going. You have to keep it going. You have to keep it going. Church workers are workers. Father, bless the church workers. Father, anoint the workers.
Father, touch those who love you and they hadn't joined the working crowd yet. They come to church, but and they praise the Lord and they give their tithe. They give their offerings. It's so important. But oh God, you know when, Holy Spirit, to nudge them and say, get in this group. Get in that group. Everybody can't be a happy warrior, but everybody can be a warrior of some kind. So now, Lord, we thank you. And we ask you to give us strength to stay at the forefront for the life battle. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you.